Hey guys, do you want to know how to implement a simple Verilog simulation in Movado so you can validate that your code works? We're going to make a simulation for the BCD converter code that we made in the last video, so let's go ahead and get started. thing we're going to do here is go ahead and create project um, and I'll have all this code on github and I'm just going to copy and paste it in here to save us time we'll click on next we're going to start a whole new project and we'll just call this one sim so that I can find it later uh, we're going to do an RTL project and we're going to go into this and build out a, a project just so that you would know like if you're actually building a project how it would look while you're doing it so we'll say that I'm going to make this for the ultra 96 board click on next and then we'll click on finish now, just to show you that it doesn't matter at all what's going on in the actual block design, I'm going to go ahead and create just something quick that we could be in the middle of coding up, right? So I'll hit this positive button and we'll just put a zinc processor down and then maybe I'll run a block automation, let that do its thing. And we'll go in here with add sources. Uh, let's make a new design source. Now this design source is the code that we wrote in the last video. If you like that video, if you like this video, subscribe down below. So I could just add the file here, but if you were to do this, you would be coming in from GitHub. So I'll go ahead and create file here. We'll just call this BCD converter or BCD. Click OK and finish. And I don't need any inputs or outputs because they're on the code already. We'll click yes. And once that's done, we can go to sources, open our BCD code, and then we'll just go in here and I'll cut all of this out and I'll go grab that code and paste it in from GitHub. And then we want to go ahead and save that. Um, what we can do just for posterity here, we'll go to our diagram. Uh, let's go ahead and right click on this guy and let's add it to our module or add the module to our block design. Uh, and of course, you know, if this was a, a real thing, we'd want to hook up our clock. So let's go ahead and do clock over. And of course, we would make some enables and stuff like that. Um, but let's just say I stopped here and I wanted to check and see if this actually ran in simulation. So the first thing we would do from there, let's go ahead and just save our design. You should always save your design anyways, right? And then we'll go down to add sources and we're gonna actually add a simulation source this time. We'll click on next. Now, again, with this, I already have the actual simulation source code. Um, so I could just add file, but if you're using this as an example, you're gonna wanna download it from GitHub. So we'll do the same thing here. I'm just going to call this sim underscore TB. I always do an underscore TB after every simulation so that I know that that's an actual test bench file. Then I'll click OK and finish. We don't need to name any of these because we actually had the file, but you could go through and do it or you could just put them in the file if you'd like. Now, once that's done, we're going to go into simulation sources, sim one, and then we'll go down to our simulation test bed here. Now, what I'm going to do is the same thing here. I'm just going to go cut all this. I'll go grab it from GitHub and paste it in here and bring it back. So now we've got our actual simulation code in here. We can go through it and I can show you kind of how all this works, right? Um, now, this is a very blocky, very large simulation. It's not very elegant. It's just kind of straightforward and to the point. And that is to kind of get you guys to see how this works. Later on, you can go in and add some of the more automated tricks and more easier things to do. For loops, while loops, all the things that you could do to make these th make all this a lot easier. But for now, we're just going to show this in a very straightforward, simple manner. So we start out, we have the same time scale piece that we have in the BCD. And all this does is tell the simulator what kind of time scale to use for the actual simulation. As we go down, we've, we're going to open and close our module. And we don't have any actual inputs and outputs for this module here. So I'm just going to leave that blank. Now, what I did... I go in and I copy all the inputs and outputs from BCD over here. All these guys right here, all I do is just copy this statement and I throw it into my test bench first thing. And then I go through and I change the formatting of these just to match this format. So what I'll wind up doing is, you know, add a dot in front of the clock, erase all the other stuff that's back there, and then put CLK inside of here as well. Now this first part's gonna be what's in the actual module. So you got clock in the module, you got enable in the module, and then the binary data in, BCD out uh, and ready. And then inside of here will be anything that you want to bring in from the actual simulation. So if I didn't want to just bring the clock and just work with the clock with this, if I wanted to say make a double clock or a second clock or another clock or a different clock, I could put that inside these parentheses here and that would go into the actual module and tie in. But for this, since it's really just a simple simulation, I just kept all the names the same, and then I'll go through and, and name all my registers and wires the same. Now, speaking of the registers and wires, for all of my inputs here, you'll notice that I put registers down. 
because we want to be able to drive those inputs. And if you want to drive the inputs, you've got to drive a register, right? So you've got to change a register around, and then you want the module to follow that actual register. So every single input here, clock, enable, and binary, are registers so I can change those and work with those and look at them in the sim. As far as the outputs, all I really do is put down a wire so that I can use that and look at it in the sim. But you could take that wire and say there was another module down here. You could do a wire out of this guy as ready and then input this wire into another module. Now, since this is just a simple simulation, we're just gonna do one instantiation of a unit under test here. But that's kind of how it's laid out. And you'll notice the comma separation is the same as with a normal code, right? And it's basically like doing a function in C++ or something like that. So from here now, we've got all of our wires and our registers and our actual unit instantiated. Now we just need to build some simulation code to flex our actual module, right? And maybe check the corners. So the first thing I do is go in and I make an initial block. And I always do this just for the clock, right? So I've got initial, begin, and then forever. I want this clock to run forever. And then I've got this statement here, pound 10, right? And then clock equals not clock. So this 10, this pound 10 is basically going to say that we're going to wait for 10 units of whatever's up here. And then after that wait, we're going to do clock equals not clock. And all this is doing is making a clock waveform. So it turns on, it turns off, it turns on, it turns off every 10 units. That makes it 20 units for a full revolution, right? And we can look at that here in a second. So that's just the first initial block just to run the clock into the module there. And the second initial loop is where I do the meat of the flexing of this module, right? So I'm gonna do the same thing here, but you can do different stuff, but I just kinda of want this to run forever just in case I wanna run it out in time for any reason. So I'm gonna do initial begin and then forever begin. So always, this, this loop is just gonna keep running around like a while loop set to one, right? And what I wanna do is I'm gonna take and set all of my inputs what I want them to be. So right now I've got binary data in is zero, I've got enable is one, then I wait 20 seconds, and then I set enable to zero, then I wait 620 seconds. So the idea here is I set the binary data to what I want it to be, then I enable the module by setting the enable pin, and then I disable the enable pin, because once we set the enable pin, if you remember from the code, it kind of starts the whole process into the state machine, and then I wait 620 units here. So where did I get 620 from, right? So what I did was I took idle, if I knew how to spell, and uh, set up and add and shift and all those states that I had, and I went through and just added how long those states would take, right? So setup takes one, idle takes one, add takes 12, shift takes 12, done takes one. And then I added an extra four just for an extra long period there to make sure everything's working. And then I also took out one tick for setting and enable back to zero. And then what I do is I kind of double all of that, right? So let's look at this formula back here. Basically, I took all of my states and all the things that I listed before, and I added all those up. And then I do that times 10 because our clock takes 10, right? But the full clock cycle is 10 times 2. So I take that whole thing and I multiply it by 2, and that's where I get my 620 from. Now, that's just a setup of how to drive this once at 0. So what I do is once I get that figured out and I get it working properly, I just copy this and paste it down here. Now, like I said before, you can come up with some pretty creative for loops and different ways to drive this thing. Um, and that's all great and works out very elegantly. But this is kind of a starter video for simulation. So I didn't want to do all that stuff. But if you look at this next block here, what I did is I set this edge case of all bits being 12, right? So what happens if this is FFF, right? And that should equal 4095. So when we get into our simulation, we can verify that that works. So when we get into our simulation, we can validate that it works, right? So if when the code is input at FFF, we get 4095, we know that that was working. So that's just one of the edge cases. You would want to test all the edge cases here, right? Like when, say, maybe one decimal number crosses over, so at, at uh, 9 to 10. And, and I set a bunch of other cases in here, just kind of like a binary plus 1, plus 10, and did a bunch of different stuff just so we can get some actual information on our simulation. So I go through and I just copy that and redo it, copy it, redo it, and change all my binary inputs to look at what I want to look at. Then I go ahead and end the forever, and I end the initial, and then I end the module. And it's really that simple, guys. This doesn't have to be hard, but it can be elegant. I'd like to keep it simple, but I also like to keep it short and sweet. So if I'm doing a much more hardcore module, I might throw in some for loops. I might do some creative driving of these things. But for something like this, just go ahead and slap it down and get it ready to roll because you already spend a whole lot of time in simulation. So once we've got that, we'll go ahead and save it. And before I get ahead of myself, we need to go back and look at this module instantiation. So in my original document, I instantiated the module as BCD convert. But if you'll note, up here, we actually just called it BCD. So what I want to do is go ahead and change that to say BCD. And of course, my test bench was named BCDTB. So I want to go ahead and change that and call it SimTB because that's what we save these files as. 
So if I go up here and save that, and I also forgot to change the name of the code up here, so we're gonna call that BCD as well. So all your module names and instantiation names need to match the actual file name that you saved the file as. So we'll go ahead and save that. Now when we come down here and look under SimTB under the simulation sources Sim1, we'll see that we actually pull the BCD unit in to SimTB. Now that's our top module, but if for some reason it wasn't, you could right click on this and make sure that it's set as top. But since we actually have these little boxes next to it, that means that it's set as top and we should be ready to roll. So from here, what we can actually do is just go over to run simulation, click on that and go down to run behavioral simulation. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, the simulations can take quite a while to run. Uh, also, depending on the inputs and outputs that you got going in and out of the thing, they can also take a while to run. For some reason, it always starts up with kind of this weird window. So I'm gonna kind of stretch everything back. I wanna be able to get to some of this stuff. I wanna be able to get to say my sources over here. And I also wanna be able to get to this window here, which is our waveforms. So it starts us out with the base set of waveforms that are in our actual unit under test. And we can go ahead and start from there and do a quick test just to see that it works. So we'll go up to this run button and what we can do, we can set whatever kind of time we want this thing to run. Um, I can leave it at 10,000 microseconds, that should be fine. It may take a little while to run, but it shouldn't be too bad. And it actually ran instantly. So what I can do from here, it always starts out in a weird spot. I'm just gonna maximize the window. We see that there's actual stuff going on in all of these. So I'm gonna set back to the start and I'm gonna start zooming in until I can see what's going on. So keep zooming in, keep zooming in. And we can see we start to set stuff here. So our binary comes in at zero and we go ahead and enable and it goes through. And of course our BCD is still zero. Then we change it to FFF and we enable, but we can't quite see what's going on in here. What we can see from this, say, 100 foot view is that something's going on and then it stops. And it seems to stop right after ready, which is what we might expect it to do. But what we can do is go and zoom in a little bit more and we'll scoot over to it and see what's going on. So we can see here that binary comes in as FFF. We hit enable. It starts to do our actual conversion here and it goes through and does a bunch of converting. And then when we get our actual result pulse or our ready pulse, we're at 4095, so that seems to have worked fine. What we can do is go and check some more values to make sure that it works. And if you remember from the previous video when we actually talked about this double dabble algorithm, I think I'd said something about changing 21 to BCD. So that actually came from one of these others here. Let's see, we got one is one. We have B, which is AB, so 1011, so that's 11. And then we have 15, which works out to 21. So this 15 is actually the hex, right? And we noticed before that FFF is the hex. So if we really wanna make this a lot easier on ourselves, what we can do, we can go over to our tag here and right click on it. We're gonna go down and look at radix, right? In our radix, we can say we wanna see binary instead of hexadecimal. And with binary, we can go through and look at the actual binary pattern. But what we wanna really see in this is unsigned decimal. So we'll click on unsigned decimal and this says 21 and that says 21. Now that we have that set to unsigned decimal, we can kind of go through and just make sure that everything works. We know that this is hexadecimal, but the hexadecimal will show what binary coded decimal actually is, right? So 21 is 21. Uh, from here, we can look forward and say 121 should be 121, 221 is 221. And we could just go quickly through all these and they all seem to be lining up and I've checked this before and they do. So now we can zoom back and say, say something was wrong inside of our BCD unit. We weren't sure what was going on, but something wasn't working right. What we can do is go inside of the sources here and we can go down to BCD unit, to the BCD unit under test, and we can see all of our registers and inputs and outputs on here and our wires. So if say we were wanting to look at busy to see when was, when was this thing busy and when was it not busy? Is that where our problem is? So I can right click on that and go to add wave to window and it'll add it here, but it doesn't automatically calculate it. What we have to do is go up here and restart or relaunch the simulation. So we relaunch the simulation and it's gonna go back to an odd state. We'll go ahead and hit play to play that out for like 10 microseconds. And then we'll zoom out, go back to the start and we'll start to zoom in until we can see what's going on here. Now, of course, this code is working, so it shows that it's busy all up until it's ready. And then once it's ready, it's not busy anymore. And we can also see that if we held that state for longer than the actual initial, it goes back to idle and stuff like that. So that's one way to go into your actual modules and see what's going on where, uh, see where any problems might be. And with any of these hardware projects, it really is about the details. So sometimes you really gotta get in there and dig down and look at what's going on at each individual clock tick and is it what you expect to be going on. 
Another thing you can do is go over here on the left side of any of these tag names and you can click on the down or on the sideways arrow and drop it down. And you can see the actual bits, what they're doing at every clock tick, right? So I can see this kind of cascading in and sliding over and adding one every once in a while and sliding over again and adding one every once in a while. And that's how our actual BCD codes working. So that's a pretty quick overview of how to simulate something in Vivado. What we're actually going to do with this BCD at some point is to drive a seven segment display. So if you want to see that video, go ahead and subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell so you're alerted when I get new videos out. Also guys, if you like this video, hit the like button down there. Throw down a comment to encourage us to keep going uh, or if you have any questions or if you see something wrong with my code or the video guys. Otherwise, have a great day and don't forget to love well.